So now you just have to decide on what you want to put into the centre of your piece. So there's a few different types of things you could do. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you the next print and create a miniature swirl on the inside. So you can see this is much sturdier and it'll keep bouncing back into shape and it doesn't fray as easily so it would be something good to work with. So rather than bring the edge in, I'm just going to actually swirl it into a circle and leave raw edges hanging outwards. Sometimes you see on pieces the raw edge is deliberately left there and it just creates the look of it. You don't have to necessarily bring it in. This won't fray as much. You might lose the first little bit, but you'd see on pieces that they use this as an actual effect in the hat a lot of times. You'd see they actually just fray the actual crinoline and have sprays of it just going through the hat and it's purposely done. So again, I'm just going to bring my needle and thread through. I've just pleated in about three or four pieces to start with. So you can see it's started to already pleat around and I'm just going to keep on doing the same thing the entire way. I'm going to try and create a circular look with it, but I don't want it to be too tight, so I'm leaving it quite loose and just catching the pieces as I go. Now, again, your stitching doesn't have to be perfect here because this is going to be sitting into the centre of your piece and you're going to have something going over this. So you'll be securing it even further at a later date, so don't worry if it starts to open up a bit. So you can see it's just creating the shape of it going around and around, and you can bring it the entire way around. I'm just going to actually cut that and show you. You could do it as large as your first piece if you wanted to and keep on pleating it that far, but just because of time, I'll show you a smaller version of it. So you can see now I'm just gathering it around and I'm just going to bring my needle and thread through. And as I said, your stitching is going to be covered, so there's no need to worry about how your stitching is going to be. So now, I'm going to leave the opening to the end, because I want that to sit with the opening of the other piece. You don't have to, you could circle it the entire way around if you wanted to, and then you could put a little tack stitch just holding it into place. Or by having it fuller, it would almost sit one overlapping the other, so you wouldn't even know that it's not joins. I'm going to sit it into the centre of our next piece, just creating the next layer that's going to go through on it. So you're just going to bring your needle up to yeah, the centre of your piece, and then you're just going to, as you bring it down through, you're going to centre that into the centre of your piece. Now there's already a comb put onto this one, I'm actually just going to remove the comb because when you're stitching your piece, your comb is just going to get in the way. Pardon? I was wondering about that, if you're going to put it the Yeah, it would catch onto your comb and then it gets in the way. Also, I think as well, because your piece is getting quite large, a comb's not really going to hold that weight of what's going into this certain piece, so a hairband would probably be better. They come with the comb already on them, so it's just an added advantage to it. You can also buy another shape base as well. I'll show you that in a moment. So we're just going to get our thread, which we brought to the centre of our piece. So this is the front side and this is our back side of it. And we're just going to bring it right through the centre of the piece. And there's pliers there as well, if you wanted, if you have a pliers at home, you could use that to bring that through as well. So you can see it's just caught on there, and then we're just going to twist it into the shape where we want it to sit. So I want the openings to follow all together, so I'm going to sit it there. So we're just going to secure it with a few stitches. Again, work the colour thread of what you're working on your base. I just used a white thread today, just so you can see the stitching going around and through the centre. So whatever colour your material you're working with, work with the same colour thread. If you're using two contrasting colours, the best thing to do is use the colour thread of what your base is. Because you're not going to see your stitching from the top, whereas underneath it would be nice if you gave it a tidier finish. So I'm just bringing the thread up and through a few times just to secure it into place. If you want to, when you're starting as well, maybe tread four or five needles and have them ready because your tread will snap a lot because you're using quite a bit of force on it. Like I've tread three today and this is my third already so it can happen quite a bit. So you can see now your shape is taking suit onto the piece. Now at the moment you can see you've still all your raw edges but they're all going to be finished into the centre. 